So with Studio One version four, we see a much needed update to Sample One. Sample One now being referred to as Sample One XT. Now, first of all, let's talk about a couple obvious things. We see that we have a new GUI update and it's worth mentioning here, we've got this hidden feature where if you click the Personas logo over here, we can actually scroll through some different colors in terms of the GUI background. Let's go ahead and just leave this set here for now. Now, another thing to mention is if this looks familiar to you, there's a good reason for that. Let's go ahead and expand our effects tab over here. And that's because Sample One XT is borrowing the same engine that we got with version three. So you can see here, I've opened up an instance of Presence XT and Mai Tai, and we have the same section for our keyboard and our effects section. We now have that available in Sample One as well. So we have our keyboard and of course our effects section. Now it's worth mentioning that this becomes really useful because a lot of the times when you're working with sample one, you maybe would want something basic like a little bit of reverb or perhaps let's go to our effects B section. This is really useful. The distortion section where we can dial in these different types of distortion, any panning, any EQ, the gator, and of course our modulation delay and reverb. So these all become really, really useful when you're trying to work with samples. Let's go ahead and select both of these tracks and we'll remove selected tracks and instruments. Now, one thing to mention right off the bat here is that we have some new options in terms of this record tab over here. So you can see right away that we have my voiceover mic is mapped out over here, input one on my audio device that I'm using to record this content. In addition to that, you can see I have all of the inputs available as well as any instruments. If we had an instrument in line here, so for example, something like Mai Tai, we went back to sample one and the record tab, you notice here that we now have sample one and Mai Tai. So we can also sample directly from within an instrument and we can sample directly from within an output. And for example, if I had a bus channel in here as well, and I had some things routed to a bus, if we head back here, you'll notice that we also have the bus is available. So just a really cool option in terms of being able to route audio directly into sample one versus having to drag and drop it from the finder window or the studio one browser. So now let's take a look at the different options. Well, we've got an option over here where we can record directly by writing an input. So let's go ahead and let's try that out. Check, check one, two, check, check one, two, go ahead and push stop. Now, one thing you'll note here is that I left the sample name as sample, but if I was to go ahead and name this, and let's just call this voice, we'll click enter. We can also change the resolution of these files, 16, 24, or 32 bit float. Let's do a 24 bit over here. We'll record that. Check, check, one, two, check, check. Go ahead and push stop. Now you can see we have this section over here. So we've got sample, we've got voice. If I right click here, show in finder, one other thing that you'll notice is that we now have a new folder that appears in our Studio One song folder structure, that being samples. So anything that is recorded directly into sample one automatically is going to go into the folder structure. So let's say you were doing some sampling and you wanted direct access to those WAV files, as of course we click over here, you'll see this one is 32 bit 48. And the next one we change to 24 48. And of course, those can all happily coexist in your Studio One song. So now let's take a look at another option, and that is Gate Record. So with Gate Record, we have the opportunity to set a close and open threshold over here. So you can see the minute I drop my voice off over here, it's going to drop below my threshold. And the minute I exceed this threshold over here, it's going to basically allow these samples to be auto sliced depending on my open and closed thresholds. So let's do a gate record over here, but let's name this first here. We'll call this gated sample. I'm going to use my voice for this and I'm just going to say check or one or something like that. Let's go ahead and engage this. Check. Check two. Check three, check four, check five. Go ahead and push stop. Now we have these gated samples and these were automatically cut depending on my open close threshold. Let's go back into the wave section over here and you can see here that these are all 
pre-chopped, and that is based upon the gate record setting that we had. Now I want to take a look at something else, which in my mind is an incredibly useful feature, and that is specifically to do with how Sample 1 now handles setting the endpoints and the outpoints. So it's a little bit hard to see this over here, but if I was to zoom in, I'm just using my mouse wheel over here, have a look at what's happening here. I'm sure you can note what's happening here is that Studio One, the endpoints based on this sample are being set and snapping to zero crossing points on this waveform over here. So it's actually snapping to positive waveform values and the zero crossing points. Now this can really help in terms of making sure that your samples are clean and that you don't have any clicks or pops. Now we can drag up or down over here to zoom. We can also use our scroll wheel on our mouse. Then we also have some different shortcuts to snap to either the left or right boundaries of our file over here. So let's go ahead, we'll zoom in. Actually, we'll zoom out. Let's just finesse this endpoint a little bit. Now we have this file over here. Another thing I want to look at is this new function that was added for follow song tempo. So let's go ahead here. I'm going to go into my mapping section and I want to adjust the low to high on this. So this is set, this was auto mapped from C1. This is set to D sharp one. So let's go ahead and let's bring the low range down, something like here, and the high range up, and let's trigger this sample. But in fact, you know what I wanna do is these ones over here, let's remove these, I'm gonna do that by right clicking, and then this one, these three over here, we will remove these as well. So now we're just dealing with this one sample. Now, traditionally with samplers, if you were to go ahead and try to play the same sample higher up on the keyboard, we have the pitch of the sample change, but also the duration. And conversely, if I was to play this lower, we have the duration is now much longer. And we now have a new option that is essentially designed to combat this, and that is follow song tempo. So now if we engage follow song tempo, and I was to play it higher, let's actually move this over here. If I play lower, so essentially the duration of the sample is not changing. So this is useful in terms of if you're just sampling one particular pitch and you want to be able to play that patch across the entire keyboard. Now another area where this becomes pretty evident is let's go ahead, let's drag a new instance of sample one in over here. And let me head over to my files section. And in fact, let's try to find some loops. Actually, what I'll do is I'm gonna to go to my actual sound sets over here and we will use something from here. Uh, let's grab this one. This is a 130 BPM over here. Let's go ahead and play this. Now, because this has tempo information over here, if I was to go ahead and drag this in, Let's go ahead and have a listen. This is mapped it out to C3. Here's the original loop. Okay, now if I was to play this higher, obviously we have the same issue that we've always had historically with sample one, but if we engage follow song tempo. Now also worth mentioning that we can engage the loop mode over here. We'll click sustain. But if I was to bring it down lower, so we can essentially engage this follow song tempo mode, which allows the duration of the sample to remain the same even if the pitch is being changed either up or down. Let's have a quick look at setting up an instrument over here versus recording an input. I'm gonna go ahead and let's just go into my tie really quickly and let's just grab a little section over here and I can draw in a note of some sort. So for example, we'll play this one over here. Now, if I come into sample one, I can actually set the input to be an instrument. So I could say, I want this to be my tie. Go ahead and we'll deactivate this. And we can name this my tie sample. We'll go ahead now 
This I want to set to be, let's say I want to leave this at 24 bit. Now I can start a new recording and this is going to be listening to that particular virtual instrument. So let's go ahead and play now from our transport. <laughs> Okay, we'll go ahead and click stop. So now essentially what we've done is we've sampled something directly from a virtual instrument. So let's say that you have something, a patch of a particular virtual instrument that is just a crazy CPU hog. Maybe you have a really nice unison patch brought up where it's using a lot of CPU resources. You can actually sample that section over here and then we can go over to our waveform. We can set our in point. Let's just go ahead and zoom in a little bit here to make sure that this is snapping to an exact zero crossing of our liking. And we'll go ahead and just zoom in on this a little bit more. Maybe something like right over here. Now, if I was to engage this, go ahead and click all notes off this one. I actually want to remove this sample. We'll go ahead and click remove sample. So now we hear this. And then of course we can choose our mode. Now I have my ADSR settings up here. Let's bring this down over here. We can actually do this in our envelope section as well. So you'll notice here it's adjusting the release as I move through this, maybe something a little bit more reasonable, like let's say something around 15 milliseconds. Now, another useful thing is with respect to setting the loops over here. So if I had this loop set to sustain, these zero crossing points, they also work for the looping points. It makes it much easier in terms of setting your loop points for any samples that have a sustain on them. So for example, let's go ahead here. I'm going to drag my looping point back. Maybe something, let's try to find a section over here where it looks pretty similar. And you'll see that it's automatically adjusted the positive waveform on this side. Now let's bring this section over here. This is ending at the, at the zero crossing point over here. So now if I hold this down, once it hits this looping point, it should be a pretty seamless loop. Now obviously we can extend this as needed. Maybe try something like that. And the idea here, is that we don't have to worry about our zero crossing points as much. We can simply try to find these points and we have the peace of mind that these zero crossing points are auto snapping for any loop ranges that we select and it's automatically snapping to the proper spot. And I can toggle to the very beginning of my loop point and the end, very easy for me to be able to toggle here. I can go back to the top, zoom back out a little bit. Let's have a listen to this. Now, in addition to being able to adjust these in point and out points, of course, we have our effects section. So I could come in, for example, add a little bit of soft tube distortion, a little bit more. And of course, we could also bring this in, filter it. Maybe we can add some drive. And maybe we want to add a little bit of modulation. So either a chorus or a flanger. Maybe we'll try a flanger. But now the idea here is that Sample One XT has become a real powerful instrument in terms of being able to sample things directly into the sampler if it's connected to an input of your virtual instrument or if you want to use other virtual instruments to create or even stereo mix downs or audio tracks or buses. We have the option now to choose these different record options to set our input. And of course, we can monitor this as well, and we can choose the source that we're monitoring. So for example, if I was to go here, and if I was to go ahead and monitor, now you're hearing that we're monitoring through and we're listening to the actual audio track, and I can monitor exactly which outputs. So if I was wanting to set this up with a QMix system or some sort, very easy to do that. Go ahead and deselect this option here. So that's Sample 1 XT in a nutshell. We have these envelopes, we have this mapping section over here, we have our wave files, we have the snapping to zero crossing points, we have the follow song tempo option, all welcome updates for anybody who's wanting to work with their own samples and has been used to using Sample 1 for that nice one-to-one -one track to channel ratio. We now have an update to Sample 1 XT, which in my opinion brings a lot of welcome features to the table. I'll catch you for more in the next video.